Static Random Access Memory, or SRAM Cell Design and Operation. Let's dive into the world of SRAM. What exactly is SRAM? SRAM stands for Static Random Access Memory. It's a type of volatile memory that uses bistable latching circuits to store each bit. Let's break down the key points. First, it's static, meaning it doesn't need to be refreshed as long as power is supplied. Second, it offers fast access, even faster than dynamic random access memory, or DROM, due to its circuit design. Finally, it's volatile, so data is lost when the power is removed. Here's a look at the basic structure of an SRAM cell. Each cell consists of several key components. You'll find two cross-coupled inverters that form the core of the storage element. There are also two access transistors that control the connection to the bit lines. Additionally, there is one word line, often shortened to WL, and two bit lines BL and BL bar, which are used for reading and writing data. In summary, there are two cross-coupled inverters, two access transistors, one word line, and two bit lines. Let's take a closer look at the six-transistor SRAM cell design, which is a common implementation. On the left, you'll see the complete transistor level circuit. This includes pull-up transistors, which are P-channel metal oxide semiconductor transistors or PMOS, pull-down transistors, which are N-channel metal oxide semiconductor transistors or NMOS, and access transistors, which are also NMOS. On the right, we have a detailed breakdown. The pull-up transistors, M3 and M4, act as load transistors connected to the VDD supply. The pull-down transistors, M1 and M2, serve as driver transistors connected to ground. The access transistors, M5 and M6, are pass transistors controlled by the word line. Here are the steps involved in a write operation. First, the word line is activated by setting it to 1, which turns on the access transistors. Next, the bit lines are driven with complementary data values. The bit line drivers then override the storage nodes. The cross-coupled inverters latch the new data. And finally, the word line is deactivated by setting it to 0 to complete the write operation. As an example, to write a 1, the bit line is set to 1 and the bit line bar is set to 0. Let's walk through the read operation. First, both bit lines are precharged to VDD. Then, the word line is activated, setting it to 1, which turns on the access transistors. The storage nodes then discharge one of the bit lines. A sense amplifier detects the voltage difference between the bit lines, and finally, the stored data is amplified and output. In this example, we are reading a stored one. The bit line is at VDD, while the bit line bar is at VDD minus delta V. Let's discuss the characteristics of SRAM by looking at its advantages and disadvantages. On the plus side, SRAM offers fast access time because it doesn't need refresh cycles. It also has low power consumption when idle due to its static operation. Additionally, it has a simple interface and does not require refresh control. SRAM is also highly reliable with stable data retention and predictable timing, providing deterministic access. However, there are some drawbacks. SRAM requires a large area, using six transistors per bit, which leads to higher costs and more complex manufacturing. It also has a lower density compared to dynamic random access memory, or DROM. SRAM is volatile, meaning data is lost without power and consumes higher power when switching frequently. Let's explore some common applications of SRAM. First, it's widely used in CPU cache memory, acting as a high-speed buffer between the CPU and main memory, such as in L1, L2, and L3 cache levels. It is also used in register files, providing fast storage for processor registers and temporary data in CPU registers and GPU shader cores. Additionally, SRAM is used in buffer memory for temporary storage in high-speed data paths like network routers and disk controllers. Lastly, it is also found in embedded systems, offering low power, fast access memory for real-time applications like microcontrollers and IoT devices. In summary, SRAM is ideal for applications requiring fast access times and low latency.
If you like this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Visit CodeLucky.com for more such useful content.